welcome to this special edition of Issues and Insights. I'm Gina Ryan, Director of Hardin County Educational Community Television, and joining me today, it's special because we are here at the beautiful Freeman Lake, which is a jewel for this entire area. And uh, we're going to talk to Scott Reynolds, who is a Director of Facilities and Management for the City of Elizabethtown. Scott, we're sitting in um, the entryway of this new facility here at Freeman Lake. And for those that have not been here, you need to come just to look at this beautiful facility because it's gorgeous. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the evolution of this facility. Thanks for joining us here on location this morning. Um, we are sitting underneath this new 6,000 square foot facility here at Freeman Lake Park. Um, that houses all of our offices and our maintenance group for for the lake. Um, people that have been here in the past um, used to see an old barn sitting here that actually was original to the property when we uh, when the city purchased the land for Freeman Lake um, all those many years ago and we converted it to an office and it was um, like Charlie Bryant um, one of our predecessors here in the city used to always tell us we shared it with nature <laughs> so the squirrels, the birds, everything shared that barn with us. Um, so we have, um, several years ago, the city council decided to tear that structure down, build a new facility for everybody to enjoy out here. Um, it took us about three and a half years um, from the concept to the grand opening of this building. Um, and a little bit of struggle with it, but hey, it's, it's beautiful, it's out here, it's new. Um, we had a dedication a couple weeks ago, um, and this building was dedicated in honor of our former mayor, Edna Berger. So this is our Edna B. Berger Park Office Building here at Freeman Lake, and it's an absolutely wonderful building. Um, ask everybody to come out and look at it and enjoy it. Now, who helped design the building? Um, the design was completed. Um, Design-wise, was Icon Construction, I Icon Engineers. On excuse me, here here in the city, um, Mike Childers and his group did a wonderful job of designing this facility. Um, we kind of mimicked it along the same lines as our nature park building. Um, oh, yeah. So if mm -hmm. the, the folks um, that are watching have been to the nature park and seen the wood structure at the nature park with the stone, we decided to kind of accent that um, because the, the parks are, they, they touch. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just trying to make one seamless transition um, so that the folks could see the, the nature of the wood and the stone. Um, we really feel it, it brings out a lot of the nature aspects of what what people like to see out here at Freeman Lake. Mm -hmm. So um, Icon designed it, um, Tracy Helm Construction, um, which is Tracy Helm's been here, he's worked in, in and around the city for years and years and years. Um, he uh, was the project manager at, over the construction side of this for us. Um, so did a wonderful job. I'd list all of our contractors, but it's way too many for me to list and I'd probably forget some, but um, it's all local. Mm -hmm. Contractors is is who um, helped us construct this facility, so it's it's really a local effort to try to get as much beauty out here at Freeman Lake. Not that we can add that much with a building because this, this park is absolutely wonderful, but um, we did try to put, like you said, the stone and the jewel mm -hmm. out here okay. of our Freeman Lake. Definitely. Now, uh, how long were the office workers displaced? Um, about two years. Okay. Um, we had a, an office trailer out here at the facility um, that they got to um, be a part in, um, and they're so happy to be in this new facility. Um, we have bathrooms here um, for the public that'll be open year round, oh so the public can use the bathrooms here all year round. The office is here, um, wonderful, um, so that when the folks are coming out renting paddle boards, renting kayaks, renting fishing boats, um, they need to rent a pavilion, they can come to this facility or they can call as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they can call and come and this is our welcoming stop inside the city. So we're sitting right across the street from our new tennis facility as uh, a lot of folks probably know where that is now too. Um, so we've really kind of enhanced this portion of the park. But I was going to say, it definitely is eye-catching as you come into the park. It is just so, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. If you haven't been to Freeman Lake in the last four years, you have missed a great deal. And, and many people do come to the park, but how do you encourage people to get to these facilities? Um, really, I think Freeman Lake speaks for itself. Um, we have you know, five and a half miles of walking trails around Freeman Lake. We have our kayaks, we have our paddle boards, we have our fishing boats. Um, there's a group of uh, 
senior citizens out fishing on the dock this morning, mm -hmm. um, catching fish. And um, I know a couple weeks ago, a young man caught four and five pound bass out of our <laughs> out of our lake because we stock it all the time. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to to come out and use um, the facility, use the park because it, it is it is beautiful. It's free for just to come out here and walk around to um, fish. You got to pay a small fee. Mm -hmm. um, rent our paddle boards, rent our pavilions. Um, it's probably too late to rent one this exactly. month. Exactly, I was gonna say, um, probably closed out for the whole season. Probably closed out, <laughs> you're, you're right, because if you don't get into them early, you're probably not gonna get one. So it, it's just a wonderful place to be. Mm -hmm. Of course, our wine fest mm -hmm. is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, out here at wonderful Freeman Lake here soon too. You can contact Sarah Vaughn for tickets to the wine fest and she'd love to love to sell you some tickets for that um it'll be just right over the bay from us where we're at right now sitting at this new building well and you also had the recent fourth of july celebration too and that yes. also um brought in a large number of people right. to, to freeman lake um this facility also expanded the parking too for the the, we, we the individuals that um, work what we did was added a parking lot for our employees right. um and for the city vehicles so um that way we could provide more parking for the citizens because it used to be you came out here and all the parking spots that were supposed to be for people to come to the building that's where our employees were parking so um, not only did we add this beautiful building but we also added the parking for for our folks as well so that they could park out of the way and have it more open for the customers um, we're sitting right by the boat dock mm -hmm. so that people can drop their boats in the lake and um, we encourage people to Go to our Facebook page or our Instagram page to uh, to get information. Our, our Facebook page is City of Elizabethtown Government Facebook, and I think our Instagram is Elizabethtown Government Instagram. I, I believe those two are right. Mm -hmm. um, Amy Inman, who is our um, who does all of our public stuff for us now, she's not here to help me out on those, but <laughs> that's I, I'm pretty sure those two are right. So they're up to date and everything. Yes, they are, and mm -hmm. she puts all of our she she does just a wonderful job of, of putting all of our events that happen not only at the lake but all across the city mm -hmm. onto those pages so that everybody can enjoy our park system and and all of our city functions as much as possible. I was going to say that that this is the sweetest part of your job, right? Making yes, these it sweet is. buildings like this. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, <laughs> It, it actually it's a lot of gratification to to be able to finish projects for the for the public mm -hmm. and that's what i get to do um I, there's heartache along the way as always when when you build anything anybody that's ever built a home knows that there's heartache along the way but when it's finished when the public gets it to come out and enjoy it that's when that's when not only i'm happy but everybody's happy to in inside the city um government so we all can come out here and enjoy this beautiful setting. I bring my family out here too. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a citizen as much as I am an employee for the city. So my family gets to enjoy it. We come out and walk the lake and, and fish when we can. And so it's wonderful ev for everybody. It is, it is. What did, I know that Edna had to be um, pretty emotional when I, this was. She was, she was very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, there's a plaque on the inside of this building um, that dedicates it to her. And so, when did the council move to make that dedication? Um, I believe they did that right before she left office. Okay. Um, I believe is when. So um, I think it was in December. It could have been in January of this year when Mayor Gregory came into office, and and he might have had a hand in that as well. I'm not really sure when. I, I just know it happened, um, and we worked hard to get a good plaque. Um, she joked around said we found a good picture of her um, <laughs> for the plaque but she, she's a beautiful woman mm -hmm. that that uh, was a great mayor mm -hmm. for for the citizens of Elizabethtown and, and for all the employees as well and it's a great honor to be able to build a building that is in her memory and, and, and legacy. I was going to say it's definitely a legacy and yes. she loves the park system, loves she loves the Elizabethtown, system. her children and her grandchildren. Right. I know that all of them use it really regularly. Yes, they do. It's yep. just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, we'll, we'll see them out here all the time. Oh, and, yeah. um, mm -hmm. So it, like I said, it was great honor and privilege to be able to build a building named um, in, in Miss Berger's honor it really was okay well Scott I appreciate you coming and joining us today yes, we're going to be uh, talking to uh, some other people that work at this facility but uh, easily said job well done thank you appreciate <laughs> it okay I just ask everybody to come out and enjoy the building and enjoy our parks and because 
we'd love to see everybody out here. Well, and when they come, do take time to come and look at the building because it is amazing. It's really beautiful. And like you said, it, it's got the perfect setting and blends in nicely yes. with the entire setting. Yes. It really doesn't interrupt anything of it. So we're going to travel on and do a little tour and everything. So, Scott, thanks you again All for right, joining thank me. thank you. All yes, right. ma'am. We moved on uh, in this beautiful facility to a nice bench that's out here. This may look a little bit, uh, this has probably been here a little bit. Okay. <laughs> now I'm joined by uh, Travis Wells, who is the Assistant Program uh, Director, Facilitator here at uh, uh, Parks and Recreation. And um, Travis, you're going to share some fun things that's going to be going on here yeah. at the, uh, Freeman Lake. And so tell us a little bit about some of the things that are coming up. Um, so we just put out a survey last month for um, kind of what programming needs the community needs. And based off the feedback for that, um, well, one thing, we got a lot of confirmation of things we thought, but um, we're doing a fall break event. Okay, so uh, now when you put out that survey, what were some of the options that you were interested, or what, what were some of those things that people uh, discussed? Um, we got a lot of feedback about um, adult programming, so maybe adult sport leagues or um, cooking classes or um, financial literacy classes, things like that. Things you would learn at Home Act, but that doesn't exist anymore. Right. <laughs> um, but um, another thing that we saw a need for um, was kind of a, a, a dual program, like an adult and a kid class kind of thing, and that's kind of where our fall break program falls into, kind of dovetail both of those areas together is kind of what we're going for here. Um, so, um, so when do you start? Is it October 5th? Um, it's October 7th through the 9th. So it's the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of fall break. It's called Retro Reels. It's at uh, the State Theater. Um, and each day is themed based off of a decade. So there'll be a movie to match and a craft to match, kind of the decade in the movie. So Monday is um, Cinderella. And we're going to have a, a craft project, which is going to be painting pumpkins. Um, there'll be a photo booth with, a, a, with Cinderella, the real Cinderella. The real Cinderella. It's hard to get, but we got her. Uh, awesome. And then on Tuesday is um, Mary Poppins, and we'll do a, um, a kite project. Have you seen Mary Poppins? Oh, yes. Okay, so <laughs> the kite makes sense. Um, so we're doing that, and then um, Wednesday is actually the Karate Kid, and we're going to be making headbands like you see in the movie, <laughs> um, little bonsai trees, mm -hmm. and then we'll have um, um, Grandmaster Sharon is going to come and do a, a demonstration before the movie starts. So um, all crafts start at 10 a.m., uh, movie starts at 11, and the movie is um, two dollars, and you get um, a popcorn and a drink. You with, can't beat that. <laughs> so it's pretty. Yeah, it's not yeah, bad, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, is there any fee for the craft itself? No, the craft is free. So mm -hmm. if you maybe want to come and do the craft, and maybe the movie isn't interesting, but you want to make some bonsai trees with your kid, you're more than welcome to. Um, that's that's part of the fun. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you come up with the idea of the, the movies and the craft? Is that just something you said that it, it seemed like that was coming through the survey? Yeah, there was some need for, I guess, family interaction or family program that you could do with your kid, not just one that you send your kid off to or you send the parent off to. So um, the initial idea, I'm a movie nerd, so I was like, let's do something with movies, that'll be fun, I'll fall break. And then um, Anna, who is my boss, um, she said, well, why don't we do a craft with it? made sense, right? You kind of put them both together and it's it's an easy marriage and it's an easy event. So, I mean, it really made sense on paper once we started kind of laying it out. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to make sure everybody knows this, where do they go to get information about this wonderful event that's coming up? Retro we Reels. Um, it's on our Facebook, Parks and Rec Facebook. It's also on the city Facebook. Um, um, we'll be doing, there might be some stuff on the radio next week or um, in, the, in the newspaper coming up, just some reminders like that. And we'll, we'll push out some more reminders on Facebook as we get closer to October. Um, so it'll be kind of everywhere you normally find stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now at the State Theater, will they go in through the main entrance uh, if they're doing the craft? Oh, good question. Um, they'll enter the gallery. So we're going to do the craft in the gallery. Okay. And then once that craft is over, we'll transition um, towards City Hall into the front area where the concession stand is, mm -hmm. and you'll enter the movie there. Oh, awesome. And it's great that you all got Cinderella. Yeah, isn't I mean, awesome? awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah uh, um, I wonder if she's going to bring her pumpkin and cut. No, <laughs> that's all right. Um, you, you've also showed movies here at Freeman Lake before, haven't you? Yeah, um, the city events have shown movies here. I forget what that's called. I know there was one a couple weeks ago. Right. And it's, a, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a summer series, and that's um, pretty awesome. So we're kind of... Um, um, piggybacking off of that, if you will, and using the State Theater, which is an awesome venue. So, mm -hmm. um, 
taking something that's been successful and kind of applying it in a new way, in a new place. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, too. I was going to say, now the movies for that, they're held over near the bandstand area? Yes, over there. Okay, and so they would come in the entrance that's by uh, Keith Monument? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does it matter which entrance people come in? No, as long as you don't come in backward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is over, off, near, target area. Yeah, it's back there. People, there's a lot of confusion there sometimes. We try to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, we try to avoid that and, and everything. Um, getting, I guess the whole goal for the city is, is you want to make an atmosphere for family friendly. Mm -hmm. And this is just another way of reaching out to the community and giving back to the community and yeah. involving them that way. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when I was a kid growing up here, um, there wasn't really a lot of stuff like this. Um, you kind of played upward basketball or you or a church, some kind of a church activity, or that was about all there was, um, aside from the Heartland Festival. Right. So, um, <laughs> you know, we're kind of wanna, this is a new venture for us as a city. I don't think the Parks Department has had people like us with our experience to uh, facilitate these kind of things. So we're going to um, try to expand that as we go. And this is sort of our first foyer into it. So it'll build off this momentum um, based off of our feedback from this and some other stuff we had in the survey. And we'll hopefully uh, dovetail it in with what the city, what the community of the city actually wants. And, um, you know, I'm excited about it. Well, I'll make sure that I go back and that I will like the page yes. <laughs> and share the page and so everybody knows what's going on yeah. and, and have all those special activities coming up. You mentioned something unique there. You said you know your background. So why is it important to you personally to make this connection with the community? Um, after college, I moved away and um, I worked in college athletics and kind of did my own thing and like you know what kids do when they go chase their pipe dreams. Yeah, they want to move away. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I came back because it's kind of like... Um, What's the point of doing all these things if you're not impacting the people that you, you care about or, you're, or you're interested in? So coming back home um, and developing these programs actually impacts my family, literally. They get to come to these things and people that I grew up with. It's way more interesting than doing these events for people I've never met or seen. <laughs> or heard of. Well, exactly. And, and, and even though Elizabethtown is a larger community, mm -hmm. it's still very um, small, yeah. too. Small town. It's a small town in a big sea or yeah, small fish yeah, in a big, uh, I don't know how I'm trying to say. Good. That, that sounds good. Um, are you going to be uh, at these events as well? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Um, Who's I'll, running the crafts? Um, I, well, me and Anna will be there mm -hmm. taking charge of it, helping out. So we'll have tables set up for, um, you know, paints and paint brushes and then we'll have the tables laid out so you can grab your pumpkin and come over and paint or if you want to do a draw sheet instead of painting, there's that too. Um, <laughs> so we'll be there, um, you know, I'm sure one of us will be with Cinderella making sure she's, um, Properly taken care of. Properly taken care of. You know how princesses are. <laughs> I know, I know. But Cinderella is pretty common now. Of course, you know she, yeah. she likes being, being in her own neighborhood. Let's just say it that way. Um, uh, Karate Kid is on a big comeback, too. You know, yeah. he's got his new show and everything. Yes, he and is. so um, this is well within uh, my children enjoyed these movies for the first awesome. time. And now my grandchildren can enjoy this as well. So that makes it, it really unique. And I'm born and raised in this area. Mm -hmm. And... I could not imagine living any other place. Yeah, um, um, so, and inviting people in, especially those people that maybe have not ventured out mm -hmm. very much, we really have a lot to offer. Yeah, there's a lot area. of stuff here. Yeah. I mean, that's just, our parks are awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the nature park right across the road. This, obviously, Freeman Lake is nice. Um, it's, it's. Um, we have advantages that a lot of cities don't have that are our size. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's a nice mix of kind of everything. I was going to say, you can definitely find something for your taste. Yes. There is always something available. And, and the trail system mm -hmm. here is unbelievable. And pretty soon we're going to have a big announcement about the trail system. Yes, we are. So that you're going to have to pay attention because <laughs> we've got something coming up. Um, Travis, is there anything else you want to add in regards to, besides this program, anything? I know that you we have the... The Christmas displays or the holiday displays, that's always, that opens up the week of Thanksgiving mm -hmm. that invites people to the Freeman Lake area. Um, any of the other act, of course, Veterans Day, there'll be mm -hmm. some uh, veterans programs going on at the beautiful Veterans Park, which is right across the street from Freeman Lake. Mm -hmm. And um, any other things that I may not have mentioned that um. are, are coming up in the next? We got the wine festival. Oh, that's uh, just right around the corner, yeah, too. Yeah, a couple right. weeks from now, I was at the Weekend of the twentieth, I think. Yeah, I believe September. Scott mentioned that, and okay. that is here, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is here. Okay, now is that held primarily over in the bandstand area? Yeah, I believe so. Um, we'll be here to park cars and uh, 
usher everybody in safely and get them out and get them home quick. I was going to say, that's going to be a lovely, <laughs> lovely time. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, it's always something, like you said, always something going on mm -hmm. in uh, this area. And we have the Super Saturdays that mm -hmm. take place downtown Elizabethtown yep. and, um, and then the fabulous Tennis Park, which is right across over there that yeah. stays busy year-round. It's always somebody there. <laughs> always, always. Um, and you see a lot of uh, individuals that walk their dogs mm -hmm. and run in the park because it's safe and it's convenient and you got beautiful scenery yeah. as you're doing that. Great too. place to run. I think we have a we have a 5k coming up in a, a month or so. Probably and, like and, and you, a lot of times too when they're doing memory walks for the Alzheimer's Association right. and Relay for Life a number of the organizations nonprofits that do walks mm -hmm. uh, to raise money many of them use, utilize the facility yeah, as well. It's beautiful. So. That's what it's for. That's exactly. What it's here for. All right. Well, thank you, Travis, for well, joining us. And uh, now we're going to meet the boss. The boss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming right up. Uh, we moved to the opposite side of this beautiful building, and now I'm joined by Anna Johnson, who is the Director of Parks and Reg and Programming for the Parks and, Re and uh, Recreation for the City of Elizabethtown. Anna, thanks for joining me. Sure. This beautiful facility is a little warm, but <laughs> it's September in Kentucky, and you usually don't know what you're going to get in terms of weather. And it's actually perfect weather to come out and enjoy this facility. Yes. Okay, so tell us about some upcoming things that are going on in the in, in Parks and Rec and what you want to talk about, um, uh, some of those special programs. Sure, sure. Um, we are new to the Parks and Rec department, and uh, we were told to come up with some programs for uh, the community. And uh, we're going to start with the Retro Reels event that you guys talked about with Travis. Um, and then come the holidays, we're going to add in some Santa programs. So uh, the first one will be Santa Express. And that's actually a partnership with the Elizabethtown Police Department. Mm -hmm. And we will provide an opportunity for Santa to be delivered to your home. So, and a police officer, of course, so they'll, they'll guide us around the community. It will be within the city limits, and um, how that works is you will apply, and your name goes into a hat, and then we will pull out the number of kids that we can do in three nights, so. Wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. It'll be, we'll do a Facebook Live um, drawing for that. Oh, great. And in addition to that, uh, we have the uh, Santa Letters, and uh, that will be a special mailbox that a parent can drop off a registration form and maybe have Santa write a letter of some things, you know, getting the kid to brush their teeth at night. Or Santa watches us. Yes, Santa, Santa watches watching. us. Yes. Or if maybe the child wants to write a letter to Santa and uh, we can help Santa get those letters to that child. Awesome. And then we will be providing some classes. So uh, wreath making will be one that we will do at the Pritchard Community Center. Uh, and that's one of our fellow uh, employees, and uh, his name is Rex, and uh, he's very talented, very good artist, and he can make some wreaths as unreal. So he's going to teach a class on how to do that. Wow. Wow. So we'll do that a few nights uh, starting in November into December. And then those details will be released on our Facebook page and on the city web page and the city Facebook page. We'll have it out everywhere. So, But this whole mix, what, how did the, or when did the city decide to take this initiative? Well, uh, I, I, we were both from the sports park, so right. when the change in management of the sports park uh, happened, we came over to the parks department, and um, our boss, the director of parks, wanted to enhance the parks department with some more programming and community events. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any fees attached to any of these things? So the Santa Express registration will be free, so you can apply. It's completely free, and if you get drawn, you get a free visit, so that would be neat. <laughs> okay. And then. And the letters will be three dollars and that's just to help with postage and things like that yeah. that is amazing yeah now how did you get these ideas did you is, did that come from that survey that Travis um, had talked about well these were just kind of starters that I've actually done before I came from the city of Elizabethtown and I did programs and events there for their parks department so those were really popular events and they didn't have them here so we thought we'd test them out see how they go here so oh awesome that is that's terrific um, in your role as program um, director, what do you look for? What are the, the elements you look for in terms of trying to get families involved? Well, 
that's part of the reason we did the survey. So uh, I think we really want to focus on what the community wants and uh, a family oriented events that a little more than just sports, you know, there's arts, there's music. So there's a lot more to uh, recreation, so to speak, to than just uh, going out and, you know, basketball or soccer. So uh, we're going to provide a little bit more of that. Okay. Now, any plans for the winter after the holiday time? Yeah, actually, um, we are in discussions with Fort Knox Federal Credit Union and uh, to kind of piggyback off the whole financial literacy that was passed through the state with the schools, um, we felt that maybe that's a need for the community as well. And uh, maybe some adults need some more guidance. So we're going to offer free classes with them and uh, we'll start that in January the first of the year. So it's really, it's neat that you're moving the events around to different locations. Yes. So tell those at home, what are those locations that you're gonna be, you mentioned Pritchard, but yes. for, for those that may not know, um, what are the facilities that you use for these types of programs? So we have uh, Freeman Lake Park, we can use here where we're at, and then American Legion Park, which is where the pool is, and Funtopia, we'll, we'll utilize that as well. Uh, and then there's Pritchard, the community center, and we'll also hold some classes with Fort Knox Federal Credit Union at their the credit union mm -hmm. off 313, right. their main branch. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's and state for theater. Us. Well, state theater, of course, with mm -hmm. the yeah retro reels. Right, so, right. Yeah. Um, as an uh, a person that may be new to the area, um, where do they go to get all this information? The best place to go is definitely our Facebook page. Um, we are working to make the web page more accessible and have more information on it, and that's for the Parks and Rec web page. So uh, those are the two best places, or they can always call Pritchard Community Center, which is where we're located, um, and that's 270-765-5551. Okay. Um, when we mentioned or you mentioned the sports park. It is still part of Elizabethtown. Yeah, yeah, yep, it is. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's definitely uh, an Elizabethtown park and, uh, and and a management company oversees that, but it is very family friendly. Yes, And yeah. it's open to all families to go in. I mean, it's a beautiful park too. Recently we taped the Run for the Gold yes, there, which one. was a huge cross country meet. And it was really fabulous to see those kids running under the lights. It's, it's a neat atmosphere when they do that Run for the Gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you that haven't been to the Elizabethtown Sports Park, it's another jewel in this this small but also big town community. And um, uh, why do you think it's important to to encourage people to be part of this community? Well, I think it only um, you know the community is the people that are in it. So. Um, with the, everyone being involved, uh, I think it just creates a better atmosphere. Uh, instead of just one thing, you can do multiple things together. Um, and I think that includes everyone. Uh, we hope to do special needs programs eventually, uh, get involved with that a little bit more, maybe Special Olympics teams, things like that. So I think if everybody just comes together, it just creates better. It's a better place to live. Well, and I'm assuming too, if someone has some ideas, can they share De ideas? Definitely. <laughs> you know, we did the survey, um, contact Pritchard, come by Pritchard and let us know if they have ideas. We can we can look into doing some different stuff for sure. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there's all kinds of things going on in the city of Elizabethtown. There's definitely something for everyone. So make sure you check out the Facebook page and the Instagram page. Like it share it subscribe yes and uh, get involved and uh, the one thing about this community is it is uh, the heartland of the state of Kentucky Hardin County has something for everyone and so uh, thank you for yeah, giving us no some problem. insight about some upcoming sure. things and I want to thank you at home for joining us on this edition of issues and insights and uh, Alexis Lee is going to be showing you some of the pretty images of Freeman Lake too to, to wrap up this particular episode so enjoy Elizabethtown come out and participate in the special events and be a part of this community on behalf of HCEC TV I'm Gina Ryan <laughs>